Live from Shadow Mirror Studios, it's the Talkie Box Podcast. Just do it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, do it. Nike just do it or Shia No, 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 no. What? No, there's, there's no T. It's just do it. Just there's, do it. Yeah, there's oh. no T. <laughs> okay. That would be copyright infringement. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Just do it. All right. <laughs> have to edit this shit out. <laughs> Thank you guys for telling me what I can and can't say before it's too late. Listen, it's you just gotta, you just gotta roll now. with it. And <laughs> don't, don't ready. bring attention to it anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, your host Dave, and with me tonight we have Justin. What's up? And Jeremy Adam. Hi. <laughs> I can I tell he, he loves that. He loves that name. Yeah, it's his favorite. Well, if he hadn't lied to me when I met him, yeah. I didn't lie to you. <laughs> it sounds like you got your comeuppance. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, what do you got on the agenda today, Dave? Well, I got a whole list of uh, things I say at the beginning of the show and then nothing else. Cool. Yes. All right, cool. Actually, we uh, so we did another episode the other day. You guys weren't here for that. Nope. Um, had some new faces on here, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, and we introduced a new segment called Asshole of the Week. Asshole of the Week. I, I don't know if it's going to be a continuous segment. Uh, I don't have any new assholes this week, but if you guys have an asshole that you wanted to to, Share. to bitch about, <laughs> you go right ahead. All right, we are talking about figurative assholes, not yeah. the bleached variety. <laughs> right, right. Honestly, it's up to you, up to your discretion at this point. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Right, if you well, my asshole has been <laughs> acting up lately. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Just making all kinds of noise, being yeah, obnoxious. They do that. Yep. <laughs> Just leaves a mess. Right. Doesn't care. Yeah. Constantly cleaning up after him. All right. All right. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> You're not telling me anything new about an asshole. <laughs> um, uh, also, in the last episode, we we touched on uh, upcoming E3. Yeah. But I know that you guys want to kind of get more in depth into that. I think we should. Yeah. I so. think uh, E3 is. Uh, it's going to be a year this year. It's, it's going to be a year. It's going to be a big year, I think. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that I'm most interested in seeing with this E3 mm. is how much third-party support the Switch is going to get. Okay. Um, you know, the Switch has been out for, what, going on? A year uh, and a half A year and a half-ish. Right. Um, and so far, it's been a lot of first-party stuff, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of ports and things like that. But even still, with that... It's been getting a lot of positive reception. Like, yeah. the Switch is selling by the millions mm -hmm. constantly. Um, and then some of the games they have already announced for this year and this holiday season, I think, is just going to boost it right. that much more. So I'm wondering if, uh, if we have some of these third-party developers that are going to walk away from some of those more powerful consoles mm. um, or walk away from at least that high-grade, that high-end uh, power game and kind of back it up and make it compatible with the Switch and do mm -hmm. wide releases so it can tap into that ever-growing audience of Switch users. Right. So you think they're going to walk away from those other consoles or just or just broaden their horizons? I think they're going to broad, broaden their horizons, um, though nothing's been announced officially yet. You know, Fallout 76 mm -hmm. uh, was announced recently, but no release date, no consoles or anything like that. Right. Um, there's been talk that it's not going to come to the Switch. There's been talk that it could come to the Switch. Okay. Um, and Pete Hines uh, of Bethesda Game Studios uh, came out in an interview recently and said, you know, moving forward, you know, after having released Skyrim for the Switch, mm -hmm. uh, that if they can release something on the Switch, they would release it uh, on across all consoles. Right. Like if they were building a title that they could release on the Switch as well as release on PS4 and Xbox One, that they would release them all at once. And yeah. it wouldn't be like a delayed thing or a port thing. It would be designed around that console, mm. which, for the functionality of the Switch, can really open up a lot of possibilities for some of these games that are more or less anchored to controller in front of a TV right. and can really expand it to where the Switch would have an upper hand on some of these consoles because they would have that portability or motion control or touchscreen mm. control, which... I think it really play into Nintendo's favor. That's true. Mm. The one thing I've heard about what's going on with Nintendo Switch and the E3 is the new Pokemon game. Yeah. Uh, Pokemon Let's Go. <clears throat> Pokemon Let's the, Go. The two options being uh, Pikachu or Eevee. Yep. Or Eevee. 
and as, I. As, as apparently the Japanese pronunciation. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and it, it's apparently like a, a like a redo of Pokemon Yellow. Yeah, it's one like the, a, one of the very first Pokemon games. It's like a remake reboot mm -hmm. kind of situation. Um, the uh, the president of the Pokemon Company, um, or rather the the president of Game Freak, the director of the game, uh, Masuda, recently came out and said it's. It's like a reimagining, a remake of Yellow, yeah. and it is a mainline game. It's not. It's kind of a spinoff, kind of a mainline game, right. but that it's. Uh, it really doesn't have any context to the other mainline games. They're not really giving it any sort of additional context mm -hmm. in terms of time period or uh, events that have taken place in other generations of the game. It's like right. we're going back to Generation One and just. And that's, Clean and restart. From what I've seen, it's 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 limited to the the original, what 151. 151. Pokemon. Yep. Uh, they have they said they're going to re release a brand new Pokemon, so it'll right. be 152 on the game, but that one's unannounced. Yeah. Yet. And then also that their Alola forms could. Like, their Alola, Alola forms, forms can, can be, be on there it. from uh, Sun and Moon and yeah. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, um, which is why they recently started releasing Alolan forms on Pokemon Go. Mm. Uh, well before they've even released the fourth generation of Pokemon on Pokemon Go. Okay. So they'll be able to port those characters over into yeah. Pokemon Switch. Um, there's been a lot of uh, talk on the interwebs about how that'll work, about how pulling Pokemon from Pokemon Go into Let's Go is going to work, and whether or not you'll be able to catch them or if it'll be broken or not. But I think just by them saying that Alolan forms will be in there, that you'll be able to play with those Pokemon that you bring in from Go. Because okay. there's no other reason to have those Pokemon in the game. Yeah. But it looks like it's going to be a really cool, interesting title. Definitely different, a departure yeah. for what they've done in mainline in, in the past. But um, the first mainline on a console ever. So yep. that'll be pretty interesting. And they announced the core coming out, the core RPG coming out uh, next year. Okay. So around the same time, about a year after Let's Go... They'll have a, a core Generation 8 game come out. So Pokemon, we win. <laughs> it's done. It's <laughs> over. Yeah. And then uh, you mentioned Fallout 76. Fallout 76. I mean, there's a lot of big stuff from some of my biggest game developers this year. I yep. mean, uh, I'm not shy about the fact that I play a lot of video games, mm -hmm. but my heart only really belongs to so many franchises and series right. that mm -hmm. I'm just religiously devoted to and... Uh, Bethesda Game Studios with Elder Scrolls and the Fallout have my heart. Pokemon has my heart. It, it always has. I don't, I, I, yeah. I grew up on it. Um, so those are the games that whenever a new one comes out in that core vein, mm -hmm. I have to pick it up. Right. Uh, and Bethesda Game Studios came out with, uh, Fallout 76. And we have and no idea really what it is yet. No idea what it's about. I think that with some background knowledge on lore, mm -hmm. uh, you can make some guesses. As we to do what it's about. know a little bit, kind of just based off of the trailer. I've heard like there was a scene in it, and it showed the date. Yes, it's twenty years after the bombs fell. It's mm. twenty years after the bombs fell, um, and it's also in Fallout seventy six, which Vault seventy six, Vault seventy six. Yeah, uh, which if you go back and like do any reading in the games, Vault seventy six was the control vault. Mm. That was the vault that. Everybody actually got treated decently, didn't have experiments played on them, right. and got released from the vault after nuclear fallout to rebuild society. Mm. So there's a lot of uh, insinuation and speculation that it's going to be an online game. Mm. It's a multiplayer online game, which would make sense, being it's Fallout 76, you'd have plenty of fresh vault dwellers out in the world exploring the wasteland for the first time. Yeah. Um, but also would probably be a little disappointing to me. You know, I mm -hmm. love my Bethesda Game Studios as single-player RPGs. Right. That's and my that's, vein. And that's one thing, like, how... Given given the draw of these Fallout games, like, hundreds of thousands of people play these games, right? How many people could, could have fit in this vault? <laughs> if, if, if you're playing someone from this vault, like, was there thousands of people in this vault? Well, I mean, I think in that situation, that's where you would end up on servers if they did it like an MMO. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if they're going to play it like an MMO. If it is played like an MMO, it's probably not something I'm going to mess with. I right. mean, uh, Elder Scrolls Online has been out for a few years now, and it's wildly popular. Um, MMOs are just not my genre. They yeah. never have mm -hmm. been. 
I like the ability to pick up and put down mm. my game whenever I feel like it. Um, and the Switch is actually really great for that, which I'll get back into later. But um, MMOs, I feel like there's always this pressure about planning and timing things up. It's mm -hmm. like, I have enough obligations in my regular life. Yeah. I don't need obligations in my virtual one. Right. So I've always kind of steered clear of those. Um, but what I think might be happening uh, is I think Fallout 76 is basically just going to be retooled from the engine from Fallout 4. Mm. Uh, and it's probably going to be a completely different game with completely new mechanics, and it might be that online game. Uh, but I'm really hoping we get an announcement for their next big game. Right. Uh, which is supposed to be Starfield, uh, which is a sci-fi-esque sort of mm. Fallout, Elder Scrolls style, mm -hmm. Bethesda Game Studio, studio style RPG. Yeah. Doodle. <laughs> um, only it's sci-fi and spacey and stuff right. like that. Um, but there's no new information. I will say this. Given that uh, Fallout 4, Fallout mm -hmm. 4 came out... 2015. Yeah. It, it, but that's the most recent that's the, most recent. the game to come mm -hmm. out. Well, the, um, like the newest one that like a brand new one. Right. Because they yeah. released Skyrim probably two or three times. Right. Since. <laughs> well, like, and Fallout VR yeah. as yeah. well. But typically um, the way it went VR. was you would get an Elder Scrolls and then Fallout. And Elder Scrolls and a Fallout. Yeah. And so... Even though it was a very short pattern hmm. where that happened, it was like Morrowind, and then several years later you got Oblivion, and then Fallout 3, hmm. and Fallout New Vegas, and then Skyrim, and then Fallout 4. Yeah. So it kind of like... Well, that's true, I suppose. Like you, you would get like a grouping here and there, and I feel like this is obviously the Fallout grouping year mm -hmm. where uh, we're getting the Fallouts together. But with Elder Scrolls saying like uh, Pete Hines and Todd Howard have come out and said that Elder Scrolls Six is a long way off. It's yeah. not even really in development yet because they're focusing on two other huge games, is mm -hmm. what they've called them. Two other huge games that are going to release first, um, and I'm what I'm hoping is that Fallout 76 is one of those, yeah. and that Starfield is the other. Actually, what I'm hoping is that Fallout 76 is not one of them, and then you get Starfield and something else awesome. That, that would, would be cool. Be, that'd be better. Yeah. Because everything I've heard about 76 so far is it's more of like uh, the Fallout shelter just kind of structured and built for a console. Mm -hmm. And that's what? what the online thing is. So you can kind of like... Like those, those games you play on your phone, the... I don't know, the like Clash of Clans or something right. like that. Like, I feel like that's kind of what they're gearing towards this, but with like the Fallout style to draw in people. Yeah. Like, oh, I like Fallout. Let's put this in. And See, like if it's closer to the vein of Fallout Shelter mm -hmm. for a console, I might pick it up. Mm -hmm. I might play it because I feel like that'd be fun. Like if I got to experiment in my vault mm -hmm. um, and, you know, build my family be the overseer whatnot and actually go and venture out in the wasteland and things like that if it was that big and intricate i would definitely play it but if it is on that clash of clans mm -hmm. where i'm going and trying to raid other people's vaults i'm not really well, going to play it there has been talks that it's going to be more stitched to like Fortnite, that it's going to be like some battle royale in there in some ways mm -hmm. and that there's it Settlement building and fort yeah, building like, and stuff like that. Like the settlements, like that's like like the settlement aspect with um, Fallout and Shelter. Like that's what you'd be doing is you'd be building your settlements, building like your settlement, you build your vault, and guarding yourself mm -hmm. away. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, it could, it could be interesting. It could be fun. Uh, I'm interested to see what they have to say about it because they have said that you'll get a lot more information on 76 during their showcase. Um, hopefully, we'll get a release date. I feel like Fallout has really, uh, not Fallout, but Bethesda Game Studios really set a precedent for themselves. Mm -hmm. Kind of a dangerous precedent for themselves in some way, but um, if they continue it, uh, it's going to keep gamers happy. And that's the way they released Fallout 4, where they came out mm -hmm. and announced this game just before E3. They announced this game mm -hmm. and showed you all of this cool stuff about it and be like, oh guys, by the way, it's coming out in five months. And that's something that they'd never done before, where it was... Uh, surprise announcement and reveal. Nobody had any idea that, well, there was speculation and leaks that that game was in development, but right. nobody had anything concrete. Nobody had said anything. Mm -hmm. And then they said, oh, hey guys, we got something to show you. It's this massive game we've been working on for four years, and it's coming out in five months. Oh, and you get this really cool shit peripheral <laughs> with it as well. Yeah. And it sold out, like mm -hmm. the, the special Pit Boy edition sold out that day. 
Oh, it wow. sold out. Like they, it sold out. And then they restocked it. It sold out again, and then you had like a third run. Damn. Yeah, like, and that went out too. I mean, no, I, I, I was struggling to get the special Pit Boy edition. Oh, yeah. Like, I placed my order and like didn't get it in on time. So then I pre-ordered the regular version, and then I started searching around trying to find the Pit Boy. And then mm. they said it was sold out. And then they came out with the second run, and I found a second run and I ordered it. And then as soon and it said it was going to come in like a week and a half after the regular version came in. Right. So the regular version came in. I popped it open. I played it for a little while. Then the special Pit Boy edition came in that had that special cool steel case and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so when that came in, I tr I took the other one and I gave it back to him. I returned it. I'm like, here you go. I I don't need this. <laughs> and then I had my game. I had yeah. everything that I needed. Uh, but People are going to have that expectation this year that right. something that Bethesda Game Studios announces, because they haven't really had any new announcements. Bethesda has, with like Doom and Wolfenstein and things like that. Right. But Bethesda Game Studios hasn't had an announcement in a while. If they announce something, people are going to expect it yeah, to come out this year. They expect it to be something awesome. They expect it to be awesome, but they expect it this year. Yeah. They expect to be able to play it this year. True. I want to go back to something. You mentioned that... Uh, uh, 76 takes place 20 years after the bombs. Mm -hmm. I have played the other Fallout games, mm -hmm. or most of them, but I don't actually know the chronology of them. When do the others take place? They're like 200 yeah, years 200, after. 250 ish years. Okay. Um, yeah, it was 200 and Fallout 4 was approximately 210 years after the bombs dropped. Okay, so this is like way back. This is yeah. the earliest you have been able to play. Mm -hmm. In the post-apocalypse. The mm -hmm. earliest you've been able to play in the Wasteland in the entire Fallout series. So, like, if we're looking at the world in relation to the rest of them, this is going to be, like, the most toxic and the most, like, harsh environment. Gotcha. Compared to, like, you know... You're not going to have any settlements already mm -hmm. built up. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have a Megaton or a Rivet City. Those aren't yeah, going to be yeah. in existence. So, it's going to be a true desolate Wasteland. Mm. So, I'm really curious how they're going to do that and. I think that right there just makes the case that much more for it to be an online game. Right. Because you're going to have to have merchants somehow. You're going to have to have some way of building up this world. And they're, the setting is someplace different than we've ever played a Fallout game before. I mean, well, we don't know for sure, but just by the song that played in the trailer, you assume that it's in West Virginia. Because mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if they ever explicitly said where Fallout, where Fault 76 was. Uh -huh. So... It could be really, really cool. Could be lame. I'm where not was, sure. Where did four take place? Uh, the Commonwealth in Boston. Yeah, Boston, okay. Boston. And then three was around DC, right? Yep. Three was, and then obviously yeah, New Vegas around Vegas. Yep. And then uh, I don't know where two or one or, yeah, or, yeah, no, or tactics know. took place. Yeah. I never played those. I, I, I'm. Be the first to admit I jumped on at three, mm -hmm. and I haven't let go, but I haven't gone back. I've played them. I just haven't gotten far in them because, like, I got them on Steam, so it's like I have them, but I don't have any of the like instructions, so it didn't tell me how to play the game. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting there. That was back when you had to act, like there was no tutorials in games. Like they're right. just like, here's the game. Yeah, I hope you have the book. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sitting there. Oh, hey, that's how I do something. I just pressed every button on my keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, I mean, that back in those days, they were all about selling strategy guides. Mm -hmm. So they gave you as little information as possible on the game, gave you the most basic instructions in the rule book, and be like, do you want to know more? Grab a strategy guide. But now people know about the Internet, and I feel like they've le allowed strategy guides to die because they know people just go to the Internet anyway. So, like, you can fuck it, we'll just give them though. tips. Yeah. and Yeah, you can. Like, I've seen them at Walmart. But I've seen uh, also a much bigger trend of the games just going... Fuck it, give them tips during the load screen. Like, I'm just... Yeah. I don't... Can't, just give them tips. <laughs> and ev uh, most of the games I've played in the last two, three years have followed that Bethesda Game Studio style mm -hmm. of just give them tips and snippets of information in the load screen. Right. And I, I prefer it that way. I yeah. don't, because like, I miss the big instruction books. Like, that was always fun. Like, sitting there opening, your, you know, your new game and then reading the book because it would tell you a little bit of the story, you get your yeah. controls, and then you know, everything else. And it's just like, stuff like that. this is really cool. Yeah. Like, I remember for the first Halo, it had a list of every enemy you fought and it gave a little description of them. Like, oh, okay, so that's kind of what I'm fighting rather than 
This thing is blue and it's screaming at me and shooting. And this guy is small and sounds like he's huffing helium. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, like I think in those days you did kind of need that background description because mm. graphically they couldn't keep up. It's like this yellow dot is an apple, and this <coughs> red, red dot. dot is a tree. And <laughs> it is a lemon. <laughs> yeah, they, they you you had to get that additional description. Um, but for me, like I like those tips as they mm -hmm. come because mm -hmm. I get to try them out one by one. Whereas if I have that book, like I'm going to read through these things and be like, oh, that's really cool. Oh, shit, I can do that. Oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. And then I'll play and I'll forget 85% of the shit that I just read. And I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Whereas if I'm playing Breath of the Wild, they're like, if you set grass on fire, you can float up in the air. And I'm like, oh, what? shit. What? <laughs> oh, shit. That's fucking cool. <laughs> and like, I like that kind of real time it's just give me bits and pieces and let me slowly incorporate that mm. into my gameplay until i'm just great at playing the game but then there's also that chance there's like that one tip that really could have like saved you for something <laughs> yeah. that doesn't show up until the end of the game you're like yeah. man that would have helped four bosses ago i think the only other thing that i don't like about the tips in the load screen is the tips that typically come after a game overload screen, which mm -hmm. are just like the most condescending, patronizing <laughs> tips in the world. Like, you get killed by something random like falling off a clip, and they're like, you should really consider making sure that you have uh, healing items and proper armor before you just throw yourself headlong into enemies. It's like, that's not what I did, bitch! And then you go back and you play it again, and you die some other stupid way. It's like, make sure you have plenty of healing potions and good armor before you throw yourself into enemies. I'm like, you motherfucker, I dare you to say that to me again. I get really mad at that screen. Like, yeah. fuck you! Like, I was zapped by lightning and fell off a cliff. I can't control that! <laughs> Oh, yeah, those, those are the frustrating ones. But all the other tips, I'm totally down with. I like getting that information as I go. Right. So what else do we know about upcoming E3? Anything? Hopefully they'll talk more about the Metroid that they announced last year. Mm -hmm. Metroid for Nintendo mm -hmm. Switch? Because that's going to be a huge selling point. Because the last time we had a truly good Metroid was right around 10, 11 years ago. Oh, wow. Um, we've had other titles since then. But they had just not done well. Mm. So this is like their chance to really uh, bring it back. They, you know, they have the like we were talking about with the Switch, so much possibility to do things with it, so much room for like they could incorporate touch screen into that. Which with Metroid, that would work pretty well with some of the puzzles. You mm -hmm. know, they could incorporate like, oh, this door is locked. You know, you need to input the sequence code or whatever, and right. you have, have to go find the code. And then you know they also. Just like who's developing it has me excited because it's Bandai Namco. They're working on Bandai, it. and <laughs> that's that's gonna that's very exciting because yeah. like other people, you know, like I feel like this is just gonna be very very good for them. When was the last Metroid game we had? Well, we it had was, like I remember when the Metroid game for the DS, the original mm -hmm. DS, came out. I was like, oh shit, this is so cool! <laughs> They're combining the two screens. That was the last time I. Heard about a uh, mm -hmm. Metroid game and got excited about it, but I think it, mainly because the Wii U was a dead console. It was like kind of the DOA. last one we got was I think two years ago. It was uh, kind of like a side spinoff, um, yeah. The Federation Force, and then 2010 we got Other M, but we don't talk about Other M. Okay, so <laughs> when was the last good Metroid? 2008 or seven, and that was All Metroid right. Prime Three. And so. Roughly a decade mm -hmm. since we've had a decent game in this time in, in this franchise, so I feel like if they ever plan on capitalizing on it, they're going to give us some information. We might not get a release this year, no, probably but not. But they have to give us something, uh, and I think another one that, that comes down to where it's just kind of development hell and just tight lips, just really frustrating fans is the Final Fantasy VII remake. It was announced like five years ago. Mm -hmm. That they've slowly released information on. The last time we got information, we got screenshots and gameplay footage from E3 three years ago, and not a word since. So uh, Square Enix does have um, a showcase this year on the 11th. Uh, so I really expect them to come out with something for Final Fantasy VII, yeah. um, or expect a revolt on their hands. Um, and honestly, I, I I would expect it. To come to all the major consoles, including the Switch. Yeah. I'll tell you, I know I talk shit about remakes and remasters and stuff like that, 
But if they're going to be doing it, I would prefer them to do it for games that I actually want to play. And <laughs> like when it, like when it comes to Final Fantasies, I will always love Final Fantasy VI. That was that was my game. Mm -hmm. Like that's the one that I grew up playing and loving. Like you know, really getting in depth in those characters and stuff. Seven was good, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't amazing to me. Like I six was, and the story that was involved with that. I think with seven, one of the things that just kind of set it apart from other titles in people's minds is it was the first 3D Final Fantasy yeah. title. And it was incredibly well-received, critically mm. and commercially. It was just very well-received. Um, and they've built so many ancillary brands mm. off of Final Fantasy VII. And some of them are we forget about. Like, like you know, there was Advent Children, the movie that came yep. out. Um, <clears throat> but then there was also... Uh, Dirge of Cerebrus on PS2, where you played um, Vincent, mm -hmm. and you just went around and started shooting people. And you've they've been expanding on that world outside of the sprites and the models right. in the game for years and years and years. So this is their chance to kind of capitalize on that. And I think if they do that, we can see more robust remakes of things like of things like Six. Yeah, but. Because this is what the fans have been asking for. If they were to come out with a 6 remake ahead of a 7 remake, there would be riots in the street. <laughs> People would lose their fucking minds. Yeah. I wouldn't lose my mind. I would just be sincerely disappointed. Not I mad. get it. Like it, seven was the first of a generation. Yes. Like that. That was the that first was my one that came first on, exploration. That was on PS2, right? PS1. Was it on PS1? PS1. Oh, that was yeah, but it was the first one on PS1. Everything before that had been almost exclusively on Nintendo, I believe. Yep. Super Nintendo was um, where um, I remember seeing games like Final Fantasy and like playing them with uh, friends growing up, but I never got into them because yeah. I was playing Pokemon on my handheld. So like. Playing this in-depth RPG on a Super Nintendo just wasn't really my bag. Right. The only game I ever played on that was Seventh Saga, which was one of the hardest video games <laughs> ever made, ever. Yeah. Look up something about the Seventh Saga for Super Nintendo. One of the hardest RPGs ever made. Check it out. That and, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the NES. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible game. Impossible. I've seen gameplay of people beating it. It's all fake. It's all fake. Um... But it was my first exploration to like a whole big explorable world uh, when I had finally grown up to that point and I got my PlayStation. Everybody's like, oh, you should check out Final Fantasy. I'm like, I'll oh, check it out, see what it's all about. Hmm. Um, and the uh, I played 7 and really, really liked it, got really into it. I thought it was really cool. Um, the game that I think gets no love at all is actually one of my favorite in the series is Final Fantasy VIII. Hmm. It gets no love. And it breaks my heart because yeah. you have games like Final Fantasy VII where they build on the brand and they're going to make you a remake. And things like VI that they have like, all right, well, we're going to put it out for um, the PlayStation on digital. We're going to put it out on uh, the Nintendo DS. We're going to put it out on this. We're going to put it out on that. Yeah. Where you're not getting remakes, but they're at least porting it places right. where if you don't have a Super Nintendo, you can still play that shit. Mm. And Final Fantasy VIII has been the one that has gotten no service whatsoever. Even Final well, Fantasy well, VII and IX, you can get on your phone. You can't get Final Fantasy VIII on, your... on there. No, you can get seven. Yeah. You can get nine, yeah. but you can't get eight. It's oh, the wow. only game that has not been ported to another system aside from PlayStation Digital. Huh. It's heartbreaking. What about Ten On? Ten On, I don't think anybody's done anything with. Right. I mean, when, when 10 came out, it was like a graphical masterpiece. Yeah, that was a big change. That was, that was when I think a lot of video game audiences, and really just out, like outside of the, the video game culture, realized what video games could do. Like I remember seeing the opening Final Fantasy X cutscenes on a, a relative's PlayStation 2 that yeah. I did not have yet. And I was just like shaking with anticipation, wanting a PlayStation Two so bad, so, so I could play, play that it. game. And, and that was that was the first one to get a direct sequel. Yeah, Final Fantasy X Two. Final Fantasy X Two, not a great game. <laughs> not a, not a good game. And then you had Eleven, which was online. Eleven, which was online. And then Twelve, 12 which, which was, was the which last was... PlayStation Two yeah. 
Because they only put out two Final Fantasies on PlayStation 2, mm-hmm. um, if you're not including the direct sequel. But in terms right. of main mainline, they only released two. 12 was really good, Yeah, but they made the mistake of releasing it right before the PlayStation 3 dropped. So when the PlayStation 3 dropped and mm-hmm. people got a taste of that, it was I, I know it was that way for me. I had a really hard time going back to 12 after I had a PlayStation 3 and I started playing some of the titles on that. Yeah. Going back to 12, I'm like, there's, there's I can't. I can't. Yeah. It's just too pixelated. And there's 13, which was crap. Yep. And, uh, was that the one with lightning? Yes. Yeah, that was the one that was just... A linear. It was railroad. so linear. I didn't even finish it because it was so linear. Yep. Like when I'd got to like chapter seven and I had still no control over my party, mm-hmm. no free range, and then I actually got the strategy guide. That was the last game that I got a strategy guide for. And I flipped through and I realized out of like the fifteen chapters in the entire game, each chapter taking like three or six hours. Mm-hmm. I had to wait until chapter thirteen before I had reign like control over my party. Yeah, and then I'm like, nope, I'm just gonna put this game down. Like, I'm I'm not gonna finish this. You, th- there was no way to grind. There was no way to right. give yourself any advantage. It was literally just button pressing. Yeah. It was Eventually, beautiful button button pressing. It was. It was a gorgeous game. It had great cutscenes, and the story wasn't bad. It, there but was just, just no gameplay. Yeah, there's nothing you could do. And eventually, you get to this big green grassy area where you can go around and, and fight stuff that's too high level for you to beat. Um, <laughs> but you can find some little stuff and, and grind on that a little bit. But for the most part, it was just a railroad. Yeah, and that's one of the things I've always loved about Final Fantasy games is the grinding. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember playing Final Fantasy X, and I grinded that game so hard <laughs> to a point that like my Riku. Uh, was like had a like the damage cap removed, had her health cap removed. So like all of my guys have like nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine health. <laughs> She's over here with seventeen thousand health. They're all doing nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine damage. She's coming through and doing twenty seven thousand damage. Well, and I just I broke that game. I grinded so much, but Final Fantasy thirteen, you could not. There was yeah. no way to grind. You were exactly the level that the game wanted you to be. For the fight that you were in. Pretty much, yeah. All right, these enemies are level 9, you're at level 8, and all is right in the world. Go for it. Yeah, like, there's, no, it there's was, no avoiding the enemies, there's no, you know, finding extra... Like, once you cleared an area, it's pretty much cleared. Yeah. yeah. Now, Final Fantasy fourteen, I mean, Final Fantasy uh, fourteen was online, Final mm-hmm. Fantasy fifteen was for the PlayStation 4. That game was awesome. That's the new one. Yes. That's the new okay. one. That one's really, really fun, it's really cool, it's in-depth... Um, and, and, I, that, and that one, I haven't played it all, but I do remember when it came out, they put so many other Final Fantasy XV things out there, like yeah. on the phones and tablets, like all, all that shit. To a point that it's, it's annoying, yeah. where you're playing a game and it's trying to get you to download Final Fantasy XV, A New Empire. I've never played it, but I never will, <laughs> um, just because of those ads. Yeah. Um, but Final Fantasy XV itself is a really, really cool game. It is, it's open world. Mm. Um, there are roads, you have a car, uh, you have to sleep in hotels or in a campground in order to actually gain your experience. Oh, wow. Like, you'll gather experience, and you'll gain all this experience, but it doesn't apply to your character until you rest at a hotel or rest at a campsite, and you get different bonuses and stuff on that. Okay, um, is that kind of like a D&D thing? I don't know. I feel like that that's like a, a, a Dungeons & Dragons thing where, like, you get your experience for killing stuff, but you don't get to apply it until you've rested or something like yeah. that. But it's a really, really fun game. Uh, there's there's at least one really hilarious product placement that makes no sense to me, but it still works. Every time you go into a campground and you, like, camp, uh, you're surrounded by Coleman camping equipment. <laughs> <laughs> like, C- Coleman lantern, yeah. Coleman tent, Coleman cooler. Like, it's huh. just really <laughs> odd product placement. Uh, but the game itself is really, really yeah. fun. So uh, yeah. I want to see Final Fantasy VII Remake before I f- see Final Fantasy XVI. Okay. I Which did, I think we'll see. I did wonder about the, all the, the peripheral games for XV. Did, can, did they have any effect on the actual game? Like, is I there don't anything think so. you can. It's not like uh, Let's Go right. Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee where Pokemon Go kind of integrates mm-hmm. and there's some similarities there. I think the only game that is close as they came out with like a chibi version 
of Final Fantasy XV for iOS. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like pay by chapter. Um, and the gameplay is different, but apparently the story is, you know, beat for beat the same as it okay. is in Final Fantasy XV. So you can actually play through the story mm -hmm. by buying these 3 or $4 episodes and just playing through the game just in a smaller, chibi, simplified version. Mm. So never played that one either. Yeah. But I would rather see, uh, like I said, I'd rather see Final Fantasy VII before we see Final, Se Final Fantasy XVI, mm -hmm. um, which I don't think we'll see Final Fantasy XVI for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So kind of talking about like the Final Fantasy, we're probably going to see a lot about Kingdom Hearts 3 as well. Yeah, Kingdom year. Hearts 3, oh, that's going to be a mm -hmm. big, big draw. I have, seen, I have seen some gameplay from that, and they, it looks really cool. Yeah, they've slowly been re releasing stuff, so like, we're probably going to see like a whole bunch of stuff like mm -hmm. in E3. They're, like, they're probably going to give us a lot about it, rather than just like these little... Uh, snips and whatever of the uh, trailers and gameplay. Yeah, I, I get a lot of judgment for this. Mm -hmm. Not a Kingdom Hearts fan. I love Final Fantasy, mm -hmm. and people are like, "Oh, you like Final Fantasy? Why don't you like Kingdom Hearts?" I just don't. I, I I don't know what it is. I think it's I think it's the fact of for me trying to play a serious RPG and having the character Goofy in my party that just really turns me off. Like he's, <laughs> like, he's gonna hook you up. <laughs> <laughs> See, in my like, opinion, I play Pokemon, and I know that that is aimed at a younger audience. Mm -hmm. And Kingdom Hearts is aimed at a younger audience in the same way. But the fact that they borrow characters and stuff like that Disney. from Final Fantasy, and they yeah. borrow it from Disney, whatever. Like, if it was just a Disney RPG, I could get behind it. But yeah. it's like it's a Disney RPG that has Phoenix Downs, and you come across Squall Lionheart. And I'm like, I, I don't want to see them bastardize my Final Fantasy characters, so I just stay away from it. See, I. Like, I'm kind of opposite about you in that. I don't really like the Final Fantasy series. Like, I can appreciate, you know, the, the good titles. You know, I can appreciate that they're very beautiful games. Mm -hmm. But, like, I just, I don't like them. Like, I, it's not something I'd be interested in playing. Well, I enjoy the Kingdom Hearts series because, like, I, I think it's cool seeing the, you know, Disney characters interacting in a, sometimes in a more serious way with, right. you know, these other characters. Like, because I'll have to go ask my friend, like, Hey, is this guy from Final Fantasy? He's like, yep, he's from Final Fantasy, or she is, or you know, I'm like, oh, okay, I didn't see. I would have never see, guessed now, like, that. If, if I like, I've I've seen some playthroughs. If I had like more control over my party, like mm -hmm. if I had a pool of Disney characters mm -hmm. to pick and choose from to make my party, I could probably come up with a pretty satisfactorily badass party, in my opinion. Like if it was like Marvel Ultimate Alliance, but Disney version. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like if I could go through and just like pick the Disney characters that I like, yeah. that I think are kind of cool mm -hmm. and badass, and have them in there, that's totally fine. Or like, if I could just avoid all the Disney characters altogether and just have Final Fantasy people in my party, mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. But I don't want to have, you know, whatever the main character's name is, and Goofy, and Donald Duck, and Cloud in my party. That just, <laughs> it doesn't appeal to me in any way. So, I don't know, I've always yeah. just avoided those games. Um, they also were one of those games around the forefront of action of uh, active time battle, where like mm. it was more action based movement battle. Yeah, yeah. And when that style of RPG first came out, I was vehemently against it because I was so locked in with my turn by turn mm. that it just like Pokemon and Final Fantasy, the two biggest RPGs in my life, were always turn, turn by turn. Yeah. So when they started like, wait, you want me to run around the screen and hit people? No, I need time to select my spell. <laughs> so I uh, just see them. Yeah. Like the only turn by turn I can get behind is Pokemon. Like everything else, I'm just used to like the kind of fast, faster pace. Mm -hmm. You know, having to think about it and do it on the move. Like oh, now especially, mm -hmm. yeah. Like I, I don't think even with a Final Fantasy game that would come out, I don't think I would be satisfied with turn by turn. Hmm. Pokemon's the only thing that I can mm -hmm. really do turn by turn. Um, and even the new Final Fantasy VII that they released footage on and they showed you gameplay, like, it won't be turn-based. It looks like the system is closer to uh, the system in thirteen, which even though the, the gameplay in thirteen wasn't that great in Final Fantasy XIII, um, the battle system did have its advantages and had some cool things into it where right. you had to, like, stagger your enemy to actually really start doing damage to them. And it looked closer in that vein. But I'm used to, you know, Fallout and Skyrim, where mm -hmm. I'm whacking shit with swords and shooting it with guns, and that's the way I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Now, 
when it comes to Pokemon, there's been a lot of speculation. You know, they, they've talked about how Pokemon Let's Go. If you haven't watched the, the trailer for Pokemon Let's Go, Eevee or Pikachu, go check it out. If you are a Pokemon Go fan, regular Pokemon fan, like I'm sure you'll find something that you like there. Um, yeah, I'm sure Brian can put it in the description on the video. Yeah. Thanks, uh, name, Brian. Thanks. <laughs> um, but there's been a lot of speculation about what they're going to do with this next title, which is, mm -hmm. by a lot of hardcore Pokemon fans, going to be the... The quintessential, the, the the killer app for the Switch. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are already calling "Let's Go Pikachu" and "Let's Go Eevee" the killer app for the Switch. No, that, no. That's gonna that's gonna. I mean, I think they're still gonna sell thirty million copies. Oh, of that I mean, game. of course, it's a Pokemon it's, game. It's it's going. You're going to see a huge boost in Switch sales this holiday season and next year. Like they're they're probably gonna sell another. I think they've sold twenty or thirty million or forty million Switches so far. I think it's forty million they've sold so far. Mm. They're gonna sell another forty to sixty in the next year. Yeah. Um, but they're saying it's gonna be like this culmination. Is it? Is it gonna be open world? Are you gonna be able to see the Pokemon in the overworld? Like, what is it going to look like? Are they going to change the battle system to a more active battle system? There's a whole bunch of rumors flying. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about uh, speculation on any Pokemon game or any Bethesda Game Studio games because those are the only ones I care about. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'm, I'm curious to see what kind of leaks we'll have about that. What was really cool about uh, following some of these things is I was following leaks mm. on the Pokemon games uh, probably for a good month and a half, two months before they actually got announced, where it was like, oh, they're saying Generation 8's going to get announced soon, and then all these leaks started dropping, mm. um, and what was really cool is some of the larger, more credible leaks turned out to mm -hmm. be true. So I'm curious to see what kind of uh, leaking we'll see in the days and weeks to come before E3, or in the hours before E3, depending on when this video releases, <laughs> um, and uh, see what's going on out there. What I would like to see from like a Pokemon like announcement or whatever is a Sinnoh remake. A Sinnoh remake because yeah. it's around that time, and you know, like everyone. You know, all the Pokemon fans, they all have, like, that one generation. Mm -hmm. You know, they, I want to see a remake of this, or this is just my favorite. Like, Sinnoh, like, my first Pokemon game was Diamond. Diamond, that was a good so, one. So, Sinnoh will forever be Your my Pokemon. favorite generation. Yeah. So, it's just like, cause I always have those fond memories, just, like, going through it, you know. Like, oh, hey, I don't know anything about this. And, you know, like, what I would watch in the, the TV yeah. show, and then... That makes more sense now. Earlier we were talking about Let's Go mm -hmm. and it being a remake of Yellow and how it's like re-exploring the Kanto region. You said you weren't terribly excited about it, not necessarily. Being a Gen 1-er that yeah. played yeah. Red and Blue, I'm incredibly excited for this game because I remember this region, I remember these Pokemon in their e original form. Right. Right. Like it, I remember when Kanto was literally just black and white pixels <laughs> that's all it was right. black and white blocks was all it was i'm excited to see it because i'm ready for that upgrade right. like it's something very very familiar and nostalgic you for me see. and i'm getting that refresh they have said in the leaks this mm -hmm. is once again leaks that um after the core pokemon releases next year in 2019 that the uh sino remakes will be releasing in in 2020 uh so like they kind of laid out this whole pokemon uh, release date thing. It was Quest immediately, and then Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, mm -hmm. and then Core Title next year, and then Diamond Pearl Remakes 2020. Because you see, like, I'm I would kinda, be really excited. I'm hoping too. like they kind of do what they did with the um, Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby, how like they kind of incorporated bits and pieces of Emerald into that. Yes. So like they could take Platinum into that and put it in there. Oh, I think they definitely would. Platinum had that really cool spot near um, the end of the story where you go into Garatina's world, and like you had that huge kind of jumping around the puzzles, and you just got to explore that. Like I think that would be amazing to see. Yeah, that was really in really cool. The switches, you know graphics or however they decide to play that you know they could put more puzzles or something like that in it but just seeing that you know updated like, yeah would be i think that'd fantastic. be really really cool um you know uh omega rufi and alpha sapphire get a lot of shit in the pokemon community Sorry. omega rufi <laughs> omega ruby okay <laughs> omega rufi uh they get a lot of shit in the pokemon community as you know, terrible remakes. I personally like them. Yeah. A lot of people don't like them because of the absence of some features that were added for X and Y mm -hmm. that were taken away 
in Omega Rufy and Alpha Sapphire, That's like character again. customization, <laughs> Omega Rufy. Yeah. Um, so they're like not really well received, and I think that you're going to have that in any remake, and mm-hmm. if and when they do release Diamond and Pearl remakes, I think you'll still see a lot of blowback where people will... Yeah. Like, at what point are you affecting the integrity of the game? You know, like, how many features can you borrow that weren't previously there and bring in? And how many features can you take away that you've already brought in and still maintain the integrity of the series? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think they're experimenting a lot with that right now with Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And I think how well it's received critically and commercially is going to determine whether they're going to kind of offshoot this into its own separate series of games Mm -hmm. and start doing remakes down the Let's Go line and new generations down another line. Um but who knows? Because see, like I wouldn't mind having some features that they've shown for Let's Go in like core stuff. Like if you know they just decide like, oh hey, you want to use the touch screen, just flick a Pokeball. That's fine, but I still need you know that kind of battling wild Pokemon thing. Like right, I can't just have it solely. Okay, here's a wild Pokemon. Flick, 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 flick. Hey, yeah. I got it. Well, I believe now the uh, the the mechanic, according from what I've read, is the mechanic is either catch a Pokemon. Or catch a Pokemon, <laughs> um, but like like it's supposed it's supposed to be an offshoot. It's supposed yeah. to be mainline in that it plays like a regular RPG, more or less. But it's not following the core series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of in on itself, representing a new branch in Pokemon. Uh, but I think it'll be pretty cool, honestly. But that's also a lot of nostalgia speaking as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now. Uh, when it comes to the game next year, they've already said it's going to be Generation 8. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's definitely going to be on the Switch. They didn't say it explicitly, but it's going to be on the Switch. So. Uh, they, they said that Pokemon Let's Go, they've aimed more towards as a console game. That mm-hmm. They're kind of portraying it as a console game, and I think that's evidenced by the Pokeball and the, uh, the Go motions. Right. Um, and that the game that's releasing next year is definitely aimed more towards handheld like their legacy has always been. So now, when they say Generation Eight, do they mean like uh, a new generation of Pokemon, like, or a new region? Like what? Okay, so it's going to be like X and Y. How they just completely introduce new things, and yes. then you can still get okay. Yeah, like you've it'll be the eighth generation. Um, and, and typically, the generations always release a new region, so it'll be interesting to see what that region is. Mm-hmm. I think one of the coolest things about it, uh, if they capitalize it on it, is. Now that it is off of the DS, it's off of the Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance, all those other games, it now has the internet. Mm -hmm. It has the ability to update internal storage. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm... And DLC is another big thing. They haven't talked about any DLC for Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee. Um, They've already said you're not going into Johto. But for Generation 8, what about DLC? What about giving me this brand new region, letting me play through, and having DLC available for me to say, go back to Johto that releases later? Like, are we going to get a game that's going to come out, and then we'll have another game come out a year later or two years later? Or are we going to get a game that comes out that is going to be getting updates and DLCs for a few years and is just going to grow into a giant game? Are we going to get a DLC for Sinnoh, or is it going to be another game? And that's some of the things that I'm really curious about, and I think that they could really do a lot of cool stuff with that in terms of giving me downloadable content for my Pokemon games in a way that I've never been able to have before. I think that it would be different with the DLC and then, like, really releasing something, because it's like, if it's just a DLC, you know, you're just going to have the area to explore. Like, you can go, say, to Sinnoh, but it's not going to be like... You know, you're going not to, starting the game. Yeah, over you're not fighting Team Galactic. You know, trying to save the world. It would just be like, okay, I can go to Sinnoh. I can get the Pokemon that were in Sinnoh, and, and I can go mm-hmm. beat the gyms over there. But you're not going to get another main story, right? But then again, if you do it creatively enough, you could. Yeah, they like, could put some kind of little story in. Like there. if if they decided to give you the option, like as a Pokemon trainer, like mm-hmm. I'm just gonna. You have to leave your Pokemon in, in your last region or whatever. Like, if you start over, you go and you get a new starter or whatever. Like, there's there's some cool ways that they could do it where you could more or less get a new game. Um, but I think if they ever did something like that, you'd be talking really expensive DLC where mm-hmm. the Pokemon game itself has really just become 
the the storage device for all of the models of the of the Pokemon and all the battle mechanics and everything else is just tacked on. Like all the regions and all that other gameplay is just piecemeal together. Um, which I don't know. We'll see. What, we'll see what happens with that. There's a lot that they can do. All right. What about you, Dave? What are you thinking over there? You've been awfully quiet. You've been yeah, just letting us fanboy out over here. I've realized in in the past few months or years that I'm not as much of a gamer as I used to be. Yeah. Um, and it's basically just come down to I, I don't like spending money on it. Yep. So eventually, I'm gonna get like an Xbox One and, and play all the games I want to play. Because like with with Xbox Live, I'm getting free games all the time. All the time for but Xbox you're not getting One. Great games. Yeah. Uh, some of them are. Some, some of them, of them are. I've gotten sure. some really yeah. good stuff out of it. Um, but it's like once you go, and, and and that's one of my problems is once you upgrade, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to walk back. Yeah. So like, mm -hmm. I. I have a 3DS, mm. and I have a Switch. I've somehow managed to pick up one of the old Pokemon games on the DS, and I've been playing it, uh, and it's Ultra Sun. Yeah. Uh, I went back, and I'm like, all right, well, let me check out, uh, you know, Alpha Sapphire. I put that in. Eh, the graphics aren't as great. It's not terrible, yeah. but it's definitely not awesome. Um, and then I decided to take one of my older games, which is largely considered... The best in the series, and that's Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Mm -hmm. um, I picked up my Heart Gold, I put it in there, I started a new game, <laughs> and I was immediately disappointed. <laughs> and it's, I, it's, I know it's a great game. Yeah, I know it is. I've, pl I played it for years. I played it so many different times. I know it's a great game, but having it in my hand on this 3DS, having like just knowing how good graphics are and knowing how good other games look, right. I'm just looking at it like. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm just gonna. All right. I'm gonna put in. I'm gonna put in Ultra Sun again. I guess yeah. we're just gonna go back to this. Um, like I, I get spoiled. You know, I'm spoiled in that way. Um, which is why I know that Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee are gonna come out. I'm not gonna be able to play <laughs> these other games. Yeah. Not for a while. Not unless I need a real nostalgia fix. Right. I like the most upgraded, updated thing. Yeah. I like the best visuals. And you'll find the same thing. You'll get an Xbox One, and then all the games that you've been getting for free on your Xbox are just going to be shit. Well, that's the thing. Like, with, with Xbox Live, I get free games for Xbox One also. So you're hoarding Xbox One games. Yeah, with without an Xbox One. Yeah, well, it sounds like you need to get one. So eventually I'll get the... And, just, and I'll play like two of them. Yeah, I, just, I, I, I just don't have the time for video games right now. Like, see, like, I don't have time to read the books that I have. I don't have time to read, play the games that I have or read the comics that I've got or do most of anything I want to do. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of feel mm -hmm. you the same way. Like, my whole thing when it comes to buying new systems and buying new games is like, I'll buy new games. Mm -hmm. I will only buy a system for specific games. Yeah. I bought a PS4 because I knew that Fallout 4 was going to come out on. Mm -hmm. I knew that I was going to get a new, Bethes mm -hmm. a new Bethesda game, so I went ahead and I bought a PS4. I didn't buy it for any other game. I played a whole bunch of other games on it. I didn't buy it for any other game. Right. I bought a 3DS for Pokemon X and Y. Mm. I did not... I actually haven't played any other game on my 3DS. My, my 3DS and my DS exclusively played Pokemon titles. Mm. I played no other games on those. Yeah. Um, and it's the same thing with the Switch. I bought the Switch for Pokemon Switch. I played Breath of the Wild, loved it. Played uh, Super Mario Odyssey, loved it. I've played a lot of games on it that I really, really like. I bought it for Pokemon. Yeah. See, I did that too. Like, with my case, um, I really enjoy the From Software, you know, Dark Souls type games. Bloodborne was only on the PlayStation 4. I went and bought a PlayStation 4 just mainly for Bloodborne. Mm -hmm. Um... I, you know, wanted a Switch. Like, you know, I knew it was just I was going to get one at some point. You know, like, yeah, there's a lot of great games. I mainly bought it because I knew the next Metroid game was going to be on the Switch. Mm -hmm. And, like, I bought it right around E3. That year, boom, Metroid Prime 4. I'm like, yeah, this is why I bought my Switch. <laughs> now I'm going to have to wait another year and a half before it actually comes Hopefully out. Hopefully a year and a half. Yeah. Let's hope they don't, you know, say coming when it's ready. And then <laughs> yeah, oh my six God. years later. <laughs> what, what dicks. What dicks. Right. So what have you learned tonight, Dave? Well, I'm not done yet. Well, Dave, not at that point. Well, you tell me. Minutes, you got to calm down. We can't have a talkie box without talking about Marvel first. <laughs> oh, you're right. You're absolutely right. Well, we 
we've talked previously about how you know uh, Disney was picking up 20th Century Fox, mm -hmm. so we get X Men and Deadpool and mm -hmm. everything, but apparently that's not set in stone. Oh, really? Like Comcast is trying to is trying to undercut Disney and buy out 20th Century Fox. Hmm. Um, apparently, like apparently the the deal was with with uh, with Fox and and Disney was Disney was gonna you know buy it with stocks mm -hmm. essentially. Whereas Comcast is coming in like, how about cold hard cash? And now it's up in the air. Who knows what's gonna happen? I feel like 20th Century Fox would be dumb not to take Disney stock. I agree. I mean, especially like here's the th think about it this way. Think about it like, all right, I have a commodity. Mm -hmm. All right, you want my commodity. No, <laughs> my commodity is going to make you more money. You are going to give me some money <laughs> that will grow depending on how much money you make. Yeah. It only makes sense for me to give you that shit for you to make me more money. If right. I'm getting Disney stock, I know that Disney's it's it's, it's only not it's, it's not going to crash yeah. any fucking time soon. No. So they're only going to make more money, especially if you start implementing the 20th Century Fox characters into the Marvel Universe. It's just going to keep making money. Yeah. You'd be stupid to say, you know what, I'll just take this couple billion dollars that's going to run out. As opposed to I'll take this cup, this, you know, one billion dollars worth of stock, which is going to be worth several billion dollars mm -hmm. at some point in time. I think it's a no-brainer for 20th Century Fox. Yeah. But who knows? CEOs are greedy. Yeah. It, it also depends on, on the situation of 20th Century Fox and Fox as a whole leading into it. Like, what is their current financial issue? Like, do they need that money now? Or can they hold out and, and take the lesser amount and let it build? I don't think they need that money now. I, I, I don't think 20th Century Fox is in financial trouble. I think, mm -hmm. I think Disney just was out going like, I'm going to get all of the assets yeah. that I need for my master plan. 20th Century Fox has those assets, and they're like, we're not just going to sell you the fucking assets. Are you kidding me? You get the whole package or you get nothing. Right. And then they said, all right, well, we'll take the whole package. And Comcast is like, wait, you're selling? Let's talk. <laughs> yeah. They weren't selling. Then Disney asked them to sell. Now they're selling. And Comcast is like, well, I'll give you some money, too. It or... could also be that Comcast is trying to buy it. And then try to go to Disney and then make even more money. Like, hey, we got something we know you want. I have a feeling that wouldn't work out for them, though. I think Disney would be like, Fuck keep it. it. <laughs> <laughs> that probably would happen, but that's probably like their goal or trying oh, to. Oh, like, I'm not saying companies wouldn't try it. Yeah, like that's. Well, they definitely but, would. I feel like that's the only reason they would do that is yeah. they feel like, well, we could probably make even more money mm -hmm. if we tried to sell it directly to Disney. And then Disney would be like, okay. We'll, we'll give you 20 bucks. We'll wait until you can't do anything with it, yeah. and then we'll give you half of what you paid. Right. Now, Comcast is still the worst company in the world, right? Yeah. I think so, is yeah. That, yeah I That's so. amongst yeah. the worst in the world. That's got to suck. It's got to suck to be that big and have everyone hate you. But they've played it so well. I mean, certain areas, I want to watch TV or have internet. Yeah. <laughs> I have to go with fucking Comcast, mm -hmm. and it's yeah, it's just one of those things where uh, they're they're allowed you know, to be that big. They're allowed to make that kind of money, but I think that's going into a separate political issue that we shouldn't get into on the show. I agree. Um, yeah. That does pretty much bring it to the end of the show, though. Very good, but I mean, that, that there are a few things uh, to look out for at E3. Do it. Uh, we have starting on Saturday. June 9th, we have the EA Play. Mm -hmm. uh, Sunday, June 10th, we have the Xbox E3 briefing. Mm -hmm. um, on June the 11th, the Monday, we have Bethesda. 11th, we have Square Enix. We also have, uh, on the 11th, Ubisoft. Ubisoft. We have uh, the Sony E3 conference. And then Tuesday, we've got Nintendo. And we've got Games Radar. So... Um, there's a lot of stuff. Oh, no, sorry. That's Games Radar is the uh, is the website. <laughs> so <laughs> it's uh, on it, Tuesday. It's on Tuesday. So uh, E3 uh, is kicking off very very soon. Yeah. Um, in a matter of one week, actually. From the taping, yes. One week from the taping, yeah. yeah. So uh, hopefully this will be up before then. It probably won't. 
I love how Xbox and Sony share a day, and it was just like Nintendo. You get your own day. You get yeah. your own day. I you feel like I, I mean I think in closing I think it's going to be a huge year for Nintendo. Oh, I yeah. think for all of the doubt that was surrounding the Switch when it was first announced, it's turned out to be a powerhouse, and I think that more third-party developers are going to need to start paying attention to the Switch oh, yeah. or they're going to lose out on market share. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be a big, big year for Nintendo, and I think uh, they've finally redeemed themselves from the Wii U. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, tell us what you think about E3. It's probably going to happen before this video goes up. Sorry about that. That's just how shit goes sometimes. Much love. Uh, but if you want to be a patron of, of this show or this company or whatever we're calling it at the moment, um, Patreon.com slash TalkieBox and uh, get some cool cool little rewards for giving us just a little bit of money. A little bit of money. I like money. Yeah. What did you learn tonight? Uh, I learned that I can talk for a long time about Pokemon and <laughs> yeah. the game studios. Jeremy? I learned that uh, I can say certain things, but I also can't say <laughs> other things. Yeah. We should give you the breakdown at some point. Yeah. You and yes. I learned that uh, I don't know nearly as much about, about video games as I used to <laughs> in my youth. Yep. Um, I don't know what that says about me. Maybe sounds like you need to, time. Sounds like you need to play video games for the podcast. Yeah. That's your next assignment. Okay. That's your homework. Okay. Well, I'll be playing some Dead Space 2. Dead Space 2. All right. I'm going to need you to get a little more upgraded. <laughs> I'm going to need you to... <laughs> that's to, to, solid that's choice, what I'm working on right now. But you still need to keep going. Yeah. I, need, I need something more relevant. We'll see what I can do. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um... That's the only game you can play now. Cooking Mama. Cooking Mama. All right. What about Burger Time? Can I just get on Burger Time? Or Diner Dash. Diner, okay, shit. Um, you got anything else? No. You? Good night, everybody. Good night. Were we recording that whole time? No. Okay. <laughs>